and welcome to a purely academic episode of We Only Look Thin. I am Professor Weigel number one, <laughs> Donald Weigel, and uh, I have lost uh, about 100 pounds, we're going to call it. And with me, as always, is... Your lovely assistant, Catherine Weigel. <laughs> <laughs> You're Professor Weigel! I'm a co professor your dad is actually a professor yeah, so I saying know. professor weigel when we just have phds in fitness and health uh, <laughs> it seems your dad has actually got a phd yeah i know so i know thank you professor weigel yes our phds <laughs> are not actually real but why don't you tell people who you actually are i am actually Catherine weigel and i've lost about 145 pounds yeah and uh yeah that's what i've done nothing that is else amazing man i don't know i've had Two and a half cups of coffee, and by two and a half cups of coffee, I mean two cups of coffee plus two shots of espresso also in wow. there. Wow. I'm a little amped right now. <laughs> wow. That is, uh, I did not know this. <laughs> I don't know. Did you, did, you, did you ever in high school just like take Vivran just to get through class, and then you were like super Johnny on the spot, like uh, super excited? I have never taken Vivran. Oh, that's a good- I was good... so afraid of getting addicted to things when I was growing up that I just like didn't do it. I didn't start drinking until I was 24. He didn't start drinking until he met me, which there's yeah. a lot of things he didn't start doing until he <laughs> met me, which is its own problem. But we're not going to talk about that on this episode. We're going to talk about the university of life. Yes, yeah, school <laughs> is in session, everyone. If I had a school bell sound, I would ring it right now. What would it sound like? Ding, 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 ring. ding. <laughs> <laughs> Although now it's like in modern schools, it's more of like an electronic like bing, bong, bing sound. Is it? We're yeah. saved by the bell. Everybody, we're going to talk about uh, the importance of an education in yeah. weight loss. And a well-rounded education That's in weight That's annoying. Loss. Yeah, super annoying. Um, I think that, uh, you know, people want to... I'm just diving right in. You're diving in. Um, like I... Doved in? <laughs> did someone dove into coffee? You dove in. You dove into coffee. Dive, definitely, yes. Day, dove, Dave. Yes, we apparently we need to go back and learn some English, uh, oh, some proper I have grammar. So much caffeine running through my veins. <laughs> um, it's a caffeine fueled episode of. We only look then, home of the fighting urges. <laughs> <laughs> That's really good. Um, so people want to just log on online. And take a weekend crash course in weight loss and then get their diploma and be done. And it sadly does not work like that. No. I, do you remember those old Sally Struthers commercials? It's like, do you want to earn more money? Sure, we all do. Sure, Learn we home all gun do. repair. Why not? That sounds super fun and chill. Oh, my goodness. I have to link to that in the show notes. Oh it's got to be on YouTube somewhere. Yeah. Do home wanna... gun repair. And then she spends like 14 minutes just listing the various classes that you, you can, can take. you can do from home. Yeah. Well, but I think there is so much that we just want the pamphlet that will tell us how to do things in life and that we just get it over with. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I know I did that for 20 some years. Well, and you actually did it with, you became an internet online ordained minister. I did. And you have married several people. I have uh, I have married 12 people. Yeah. <laughs> 12 sets of people. 12 sets of people. Is Not it including really Donald's. 12 sets of people? I think it's, I think it's 12. Uh, I've performed 12 marriage ceremonies. But even though you're an online ordained minister, like you logged on and paid a little money and then it was done, but it that doesn't doesn't make you qualified to like no, have to, a congregation no, and no, like no, no, preach no, no. about anything. No. Like you actually have to, you know, go to school and learn how to do all of those right. things. I can sign an official document because it is a protected class, but I am not in any position to minister to anyone except right. Aside from having a podcast where all I do is preach about weight loss. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and like I, one time a few years ago, I watched a YouTube video, maybe a couple of YouTube videos about replacing a faucet on a sink and I did it and I successfully did it. You're but basically a plumber now. That doesn't make me a plumber actually. You're not a plumber. No. Okay. No, I like you do not want to call me when you have, uh, you know, a to pipe plumb. is burst and it's your, your house is filling with water. That's not what you want to do is call me. You want to call someone who actually like learned all the things you need to know about plumbing. Can't I just do nothing? And you probably don't want me to replace the faucet on your sink either, actually. But, <laughs> you but, did a good job. But it was fine. Yes, it worked out well. No, but I spent 
25 years trying to lose weight quickly. And I thought all I needed, I was just missing that one weird trick. Like if only I did this one thing, drink a glass of water before breakfast, lunch, and dinner, it's solved. I thought I just needed one little thing to get my degree in weight loss. And then suddenly I would cross the finish line. I would I would cross the stage. I'd move the tassel from left to right yeah. or right to left or whatever. And then suddenly I would be fixed. Turns out that didn't really work for me up until I was age 41. Yeah. And, and I just wanted somebody to tell me what to eat and when to eat it and which exercises to do, and I thought that was going to be the key to fixing me and for me to have my weight loss education and to graduate and get to my goal. And it turns out there are many, many more classes, and nobody focused on my mindset and and fixing all of those things that I was doing wrong, and that was really the key to getting where I am right now. Hmm. So you're telling me that it takes investment and time in order to change your mindset? Yes, unfortunately. <laughs> That's annoying. <laughs> it's a super bummer. Well, I what I wanted to talk about, uh, because I have things to talk about with all of the caffeine that I've had this morning. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, I wanted to talk about things I might have said to myself in the past, and you, dear listener, might be saying to yourself right now, even after listening to all of these inspiring episodes. Um, have you ever said to yourself, sure, we all do. No, uh, <laughs> I just want this weight to be gone, then I'll maintain. Oh my goodness, I've said that. I'll do a crash diet. Maybe you don't say crash, but like I'll eat nothing but eggs and lettuce for 20 days and lose 50 pounds. Then I'll maintain and then I'll do something healthy. Oh my goodness. Then yes. I'll switch to something sustainable. I don't have the patience to lose weight slowly. Yep. Guilty. Uh, I don't want to think about my weight anymore. I just want this to be over. Oh my goodness. Like hundreds of times. News flash, everybody. Yeah. I have, I don't know if uh, if we've talked about this before. I've not looked at the math of it, but it took me 18 months to lose 100 pounds. Or maybe it took me 41 years to lose 100 yeah, pounds. Yeah, Depending yeah. on how you look at it. Yeah, yeah. I have been maintaining my weight loss twice as long as it took me to lose it. And guess what? I am not doing anything different yeah. in maintenance than what I was doing in the weight loss part of it. It is not over. It is not like I actually. I would actually contend that you might be working harder now than you were before. For because sure. you've now added, like, I believe since you hit your goal, you've added your yoga and you've added, you know, your weights training. Yeah, and, and Walt Place and a podcast yeah, on top yeah, of yeah. it all. But it's not. You know, none of this is over for us. We're not on some uh, pedestal. We're not tenured professors. No, in weight there's, loss, there's no tenure in this. Like, like we can easily get kicked out of the uh, the the weight loss, the Walt. We only look in <laughs> university uh, at any time. But I, you know, for anyone out there who is thinking, I just want this to be over. I just want that one episode of Walt to fix me. I just need to lose that last 20 and then I can move on with the rest of my life. This, you know, I, I think the kind of weight loss people we're talking to are people who have been struggling with their weight for maybe decades. Sure, there are people who may have put on weight in the last number of years from pregnancy or, you know, different lifestyles. But for us, with the chronic condition of obesity, it is not over for us. No. We are not fixed. And we don't see it as a finite point that we're past, okay, we hit our goal weights and now it's over. And for anyone out there who is in the early stages of weight loss, or maybe you haven't lost any weight yet, there is no point at which, for at least for me, that this is going to be over. No, not for me either. The, the question is, are you a lifelong learner? Are you making a lifelong investment in change in yourself? Or are you seeing this as a weekend gun repair, Sally Struthers diploma that you're going to put up on a wall and yeah. then move on with the rest of your life? Because everything we do, all the choices we make, all the stresses we have tie back to our issues with emotional and compulsive eating. And we are educating ourselves and investing in ourselves in the University of Weight Loss. We certainly are. So Catherine, yes. let's say that- That's my name. Let's say that we've now convinced people that they <laughs> need to enroll in the university, the Walt University of Weight Loss. Um, what 
do we tell them from there? Let's just say they've accepted the premise now that they need a well-rounded education. What do they do? Well, they take really boring classes that they don't think are germane to weight loss. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Just like actual college where they, like your major, you know, my major was communications. I just wanted to take classes about, uh, you know, television and film production and and skip all the rest of it. But Why do I need accounting? (laughs) I know. Because your dad was a professor in accounting. Exactly. And I had to take a foreign language and I had to take science and I had to take uh, some some history and, and that sort of thing. And I thought to myself, when am I ever going to use any of this? Yeah, well, I don't know if anyone knows this, but I actually started working right out of high school. Um, I didn't go to university. And I think the thing that I miss most about actually going away to college were all the trappings that they sell at Bed Bath & Beyond, all the caboodles, all of the storage units for dorm rooms. I am 46 years old. Catherine has this (laughs) giant dorm room-sized hole in her heart that will only be filled by me letting her go live at a dorm for a semester so she can decorate it in a particular way. I have an actual problem. I... I was going to I was working full time and going to college full time um in my mid to late twenties. Yeah. And I still have this dorm room fascination that I like we'll get the like back to college things and if, I if our daughter goes to live at a dorm, oh I mean gosh. it's going to be I, I can't even imagine how much Catherine is going to decorate this thing. So many caboodles and places so to like under much. bed storage. You should see what she did to our kids' locker at Oh my gosh, it was school. embarrassing. Yeah. <laughs> it was kind of embarrassing. <laughs> anyway, I definitely uh, live vicariously through other people. But I worked full-time and went to college full-time at the same time, and it was really difficult. I felt like I was behind everyone else because I was, I think, what, 23, 24 before I started going to college? Yeah. But it, like, I was kind of self-conscious about it. And for anyone there out there who is maybe, you know, thinking by this age they should have figured it out, if I didn't figure it out by 40, if I didn't figure it out by 50 – how can I, you know, how can I expect to lose weight now? It's too late for me. It is never too late to get an education, no. metaphorically or actually like an actual real education. And for me, that sort of self-consciousness about it of being behind everyone else, for anyone out there who is self-conscious about not having gotten there yet, there is always time to invest in yourself. You can take metaphorically one class at a time. You don't have to stop yeah. the rest of your life. You can do it while still living the rest of your life. And I think what Donald was saying about sort of the the courses that you take for the last, you know, up until I was 41, I just thought I needed fewer calories. Right. What I didn't understand is that I had terrible boundaries. I wasn't standing up for myself. I didn't realize that purposeful movement mattered. And I had this laser-like focus on all I need is this one weird class, this one weird trick. And I wasn't looking for an actual well-rounded education. I wanted to cram and get that online, you know, overnight degree. And then I thought I would be fixed. But I was not correct. Yeah, and just to go back uh, half a subject, um, I wasn't planning to talk about this, but when you were talking about it's never too late to get an education, there is a a logical fallacy called the sunk costs fallacy. And I just wanted to mention that one of those sort of hard truths I think that I've learned about life is that if you're if you've made a mistake for a really long time, <laughs> yeah, that is not a good reason to keep making that mistake. Right. Whether that mistake is a relationship or a weight loss and fitness lifestyle or a job you've been in for too long that you shouldn't have been in. There's just because you've been making that mistake for a really long time, you shouldn't keep doing it. And it really is never too late. And if I can make every mistake in the book for 45 years and then turn it around, I'm confident that you can too. But to get back to the uh, the university metaphor that Catherine <laughs> was talking about, you know, they force you in school. People just, when they sign up for college, when they sign up, when you get into a university or a college, people just want to focus on their major, like I was talking about before. And in, in weight loss, I feel like that tends to be people just want to go to the gym. They just want to focus on, you know, if I just exercise for an hour a day or I just exercise for 30 minutes a day. And we've done other episodes 
fairly recently even where we've talked about how what a small percentage of your your day an hour is or a half hour is that you're doing that exercise and school makes you take all of these other other classes for a reason it and it's not just necessarily because they want to put you through the pain of having right. to learn physics. Right. They just want me to like spend money on classes. This is bull. <laughs> right. You know, and the same thing with weight loss, like you can't just focus on exercise or even really just focus on counting calories. It has to be you have to focus on all kinds of habits and it's it's becoming well rounded in all of these things. Like it's not just I, I didn't magically lose weight by suddenly parking my car far away and right. majoring in in extra steps at the grocery store. Like it was adding extra steps into all of my life and logging my calories and weighing and measuring and all of those things put together that I had to focus on to finally get it together and really working on all those mindset things too, which was the biggest part of it that people I feel like just don't usually talk about. Right. And I mean, I know uh, we make uh, movie metaphors all the time, but I remember when we saw The Matrix and um, Neo gets like a cable inserted into his neck or whatever and he downloads all the, you know, kung fu moves or whatever right right and he suddenly learns how to fly a helicopter right like, just and it's by like plugging into a computer right and at the time i was like why don't we live in that world like it'd be so awesome if i could just do whatever and yeah i think we skip ahead to that wow it must be nice to be neo and suddenly be able to you know do scissor kicks in the air or whatever but we don't want to invest the time it takes to actually learn a practice we want everything downloaded at once. We don't want to have to apply our knowledge, get insight, have growth, learning, perspective, and even like a dialogue with other people. Like you learn something and then you use it in real life and see how it applies. I mean, I went to um, school and got a business degree, but I was like, oh, I already know how to do businessy things. Yeah. But having the actual vocabulary and acumen to apply what I learned back at the office, you know, when I was going to school, it actually really mattered. It's like, oh, marketing matters, accounting matters, you know, finances matter. It all, no matter what your discipline is, having that well-rounded education matters. Having people disagree with you, having, you know, group projects. You yeah. were talking. Why don't you talk about group projects? Yeah, I was talking about this before we started recording. I, I feel like a lot of the things that I learned, a lot of the most valuable things that I learned in school weren't the subject matter or wasn't the subject matter they were teaching me, but it was the skills that I learned while I was there. It was researching and communicating and how to write, how to put sentences together and how to um, get along with people. When I was in high school, all of the people that were there were people I grew up with and I knew them and we would be put into group projects and we already had this relationship. But in college, I learned how to work with people who were from different backgrounds that I didn't know and to really understand that when I got into the workplace, those skills of dealing with people who I didn't know and yeah. suddenly having to to do these group things together and work together were invaluable to me. And it's all of those researching and problem solving skills that I didn't even really know I was learning when I was in college that have really served me in the workplace since then. Well, for sure. And I think too, in school, and I, I think in the university of life, we come across people who seem to have it easy or seem to be able to like breeze through weight loss or, you know, any part of their life. And we think it must be nice to be that person. But in group projects in college, I remember I did a group project and, uh, one of my fellow classmates actually plagiarized their work. It was very, wow. cl- it was very clear that it was not their work. Yeah. Just knowing who they were. And I felt cheated like somehow it diminished me because they were plagiarizing. Yeah. But in the end, what mattered was my research, my insight, my, you know, investment in my time and what they were doing, whether you're doing a crash diet or you see someone who loses 20 pounds from doing some, you know, get thin quick thing or taking meal replacements or whatever, we can be jealous that they're getting that progress quickly. But that guy that I had the class with, it's his education. It, he was cheating himself by plagiarizing. So me being upset that he got an A on work that he didn't really deserve doesn't change the investment that I made in my education. And, you know, learning in life that we're all coming at this from a different perspective. We all have different challenges. I didn't 
it never occurred to me while, you know, I was trying to lose weight from age 14 to 41 that I needed a class in setbacks, work stress, family crisis, managing vacations, boundaries, pumping up the volume, fitness, holidays, all of these things I didn't think mattered in my weight loss. And it turns out all of that has built my ability to have maintained for three years. And it's about, you know, not stress eating and teaching myself to to not eat my feelings and things like that, which I don't feel like people talked about. And it it, it wasn't necessarily the exact courses that, that I was taking. It was all of these other things. And there's also a there's also an ability to take pieces from all these different plans, all these mistakes that I made all over the years. And I still talk about how from Weight Watchers, it's not really the Weight Watchers program that I still use, but learning to log my food was, was huge. And I had never done that before. And it sounds very simple, but getting into that habit has been a cornerstone of what I'm doing now. And so I'm able to take that bit of it. And you know, I we had this terrible uh, plan that we were on working out with a personal yeah. trainer, but learning how to exercise properly and and still doing some of those exercises, taking the ones that really worked for me and my lifestyle, you know, I'm able to take those pieces and still use them today. Well, and too, I mean, you had talked about or we had talked about before this, that idea of I just want the weight gone and then I'll maintain and then I'll be healthy. If I could just lose 50 pounds, then I promise I'll be good. You have a person or peoples in mind about. Yeah, uh, I, I went to school, um, became good friends with a couple of people in particular who, while they were at school, they messed around. Like the three of us joined the, we pledged the Delta frat and we got put on <laughs> double secret probation by the dean. And I think John Belushi. Wait, was there for some reason that was animal house donald oh maybe i just saw that movie anyway (laughs) do you um, know that i actually at one point uh 20 or 30 years ago i was telling a story it was probably 30 years ago now (laughs) yeah 95 years ago i was telling a story and it ended up being an episode of beavis and butthead i was like do you remember this one time when i Oh wait, no, that was actually an episode of Beavis and Butthead. I, i know this is a this is like a way tangent off of anything but the it fascinates me. It is well documented that people will invent memories and it's it's amazing to me and they'll swear that it happened to them, but people will hear a story or something just like you said and then the, over time they retell it enough that they're convinced that it happened to them. Yeah. It's really fascinating. Um, but anyway, you know, I, I the only uh, frat I actually pledged was I ate a pie <laughs> and I ate lots of pies in school. Um, getting back to that, but these guys um this is an actual story like yeah, actual people i i am one of those nerds who in school buckled down when i was in college and i really tried hard to get good grades and i feel like learning those habits served me well when i got out of school i worked with a couple of guys who really just did the bare minimum to scrape by in school and they both would say to me well when i graduate and it really matters then i'm going to really you know yeah. apply and I think it's the same thing with weight. Oh, and P.S. By the way, they didn't, um, <laughs> and both of them had to go back to school later to get other degrees so that they could then get themselves together to finally uh, start their careers. But the point here is that if you suddenly lost the weight, if you just were handed the diploma, would you have the habits in place to keep it off? Would yeah. you have the knowledge? Would you have taken all of the classes? Would you have gotten your study habits together in order to keep it off? And the chances are that you wouldn't unless you do this the hard way. It's one of those sad truths about life that you have to really go through and do the work so that you have the skills to keep it off. There's, I know, I think we've talked about it on this podcast before. There's that story of like the the woman who gets the magical ballet shoes, yeah. and and the guy who gets the magical guitar, and she's able to suddenly dance like a professional, you know, world class ballerina, but she doesn't have the leg strength, and yeah. it ends up like messing up her ankles or something. And like the guy is able to play guitar beautifully, but he doesn't have the calluses in place, and it wrecks his fingers, and. It's this lesson about you actually, you know, you can't just be gifted some of these things. You have to go through it and, you know, go through the motions to really be able to keep the weight off in this case. I'm mixing all my metaphors (laughs) now, but you get what I mean. Yeah, but I mean, and I've, you know, we're all in situations where there's some things that we can learn quickly. I mean, and for me, 
I expose myself to podcasts, books, other people, support groups, and then actual programs like Weight Watchers or, you know, calorie counting programs. And it all builds this robust sort of, you know, um, universe that I've built for myself of resources and methods. Right. Some things I can watch a YouTube video on and be like, oh, okay, now I know how to do that. And yeah. it's super easy. But so much of boundaries and patience and all of that comes from just experience and time. And I like literally remember the day when I realized that boundaries were an issue for me. And one of the cornerstone problems yeah. I had because I was not telling people what I needed. I was hiding. And as revenge, I was eating for all of that. And here I was, you know, for 40 plus years, just thinking all I needed was, you know, some fiber pill to fill my stomach before I ate so I wouldn't be hungry. It turned out I had no backbone and no ability to tell people what I actually needed. And that was a class I never knew I needed. And so in all of this, wherever you are in your weight loss or, you know, your journey, if you are impatient to lose weight, we are here to tell you that weight is still a part of our lives every day. Yeah. Our boundaries, our emotional eating, our discipline, all of that comes and it doesn't go away. We didn't cross a finish line. We didn't, you know, move a tassel from left to right. This is an investment we're making in the rest of our lives. And we will continue to learn and continue to have challenges that we'll have to, you know, face to keep this weight off. And if you are looking at a calendar going, oh my gosh, I've got a hundred pounds to lose. I don't have the patience for this. I just want this to be over. There is no over. We are doing exactly what we did four years ago to keep this weight off. There is no finish line. You can take all of this one class at a time, one semester at a time. Yeah, there's no deadline to graduate. There's no like, I have to do this in two years. You know, there's no, I have to do this in four years. You know, you can do this at your own pace as long as you do it. If you're, if you're taking the classes and slowly building this up, eventually the work is going to pay off. You know, it's like that, you know, you add one grain of sand at a time yeah. to a bottle, like, it doesn't seem like very much, but eventually that bottle is going to be full and, you know, or that, that ant that, you know, pushes the, <laughs> the plant over or whatever, yeah. you know, eventually, <laughs> eventually that rubber tree plant falls over if you put enough, you know, you keep pushing and pushing and pushing. Well, and two, you know, I, I said earlier that I didn't go to traditional college. I wasn't, you know, fresh out of high school at a university cramming and learning and getting it over with. I went to school while I was working full time. And as an adult, we are faced with so many different challenges and so many different barriers with our time. As a working adult, like right now, I am working from home. Our daughter is homeschooling, which is its own fresh hell. Like there's so many things going on, but I'm continuing to implement the practices that I've learned over the years. And we do not lose weight in a vacuum. We don't just, you know, go to Weight Loss Island and lose all the weight and then come home and, you know, we're able to to implement everything that we've learned. Real life gets in the way, work gets in the way, kids get in the way, boundaries get in the way. But we're pushing through every day trying to keep up with the habits that we've learned. It's There's no finish line in any of this. Well, and I think that the, you know, if you want to look at this with a growth mindset, you don't have to commit to a career when you're 18 yeah. years old. You know, you're, you know, typically... It, what are you going to do with your life? <laughs> for, for our international listeners, typically at age 18, you're, you're picking a, a major, which is supposed to be the thing that you're going to do for the rest of your life, and you're 18 years old. And with weight loss, no one is forcing you to pick the thing yeah. that you're going to do for the rest of your life. You can still alter and change your plan as you go along. And even now, I'm not doing exactly the same right. thing that I was three or four years ago when I was trying to lose the weight. I'm always altering it and making things fit for my lifestyle. And, and also adjusting for different times in my life when, you know, because of COVID, I was unemployed for a long time. Now I'm back to work and I'm not doing exactly the same things that I was uh, back then. I'm, I'm adjusting and, but I'm still making it work because I have a well-rounded education. Yeah. And 
must be nice. You were also down on the scale today, which I went to go and I got on the scale to see if it had magically gone down for me and maybe the scale was broken. But no, it was all just you and your hard work and efforts. Sadly for you, <laughs> it was. I'm just awesome, I guess. I don't know. No, but I, you know, I think Donald is right. There's no one major. There's no one degree. There's no one university that's the right thing. We're doing different things than we did, you know, when we started out four years ago. But we're still applying everything that we've learned. So in the past, I thought I just needed to take a class, learn it, cram for it memorize it and then move on. And now I think the biggest shift that has happened in the last five years is that I now realize that I'm applying everything that I have learned. I have perspective, application, insight, growth, learning, all of those different things. I want to learn more. Like I am excited to get new information all the time. Yeah. I'm not annoyed by it. Like, oh no, more research, more information. Boo. Like I have a growth mindset now. I want to learn more. I want to keep growing. It is not in the past. I am an active learner. So if you are out there listening, are you an active participant in your weight loss? Do you look at it as an end point that you can get past and get over? Because we do not look at it that way anymore. We see it as a lifelong investment in ourselves. We sure do. Well, thank you so much for attending today's uh, lesson. <laughs> we appreciate you uh, subscribing to uh, Walt University. And uh, if you liked what you heard today, you can hear a whole bunch of other episodes wherever you found this one. Um, you can also check out our website where we have all of the episodes archived um, at weonlylookthin.com. Yeah, you can email us at weonlylookthin at gmail.com. Speaking of which, we are still looking for oh, tips yeah. of the week. Tips of the week. Tell, Tell everybody. If you have a tip of the week that you would like to share about your weight loss journey adventure, uh, email us at weonlylookthin at gmail.com and put T-O-W, tip of the week, in the subject header. And maybe we will feature one of your tips on this very podcast. Yeah, yeah you, you could be internet famous. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you can uh, find us on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram at We Only Look Thin. And if you want to find out more information about our online accountability group, go to weonlylookthin.com and click on Join Our Support Group. Yes, indeed. There's uh, lots of information there. It is an online support group for women that uh, Catherine runs, and uh, it's pretty great. Yeah. And if you'd like to do something to help us out, uh, we would really appreciate if you went to Apple Podcasts and uh, rated and reviewed the show. Um, every uh, every little rating and review helps. Uh, when people are searching for shows like ours, uh, it helps boost us in the search results. And it's like giving your teacher an apple, which apparently teachers love apples. Teachers love <laughs> apples. That's one thing I've learned. <laughs> So if you still don't know the difference between doing a keg stand at your fraternity and doing a push-up in your living room, <laughs> just remember that Catherine and I are an, an inspiration. inspiration. The information that you hear on this podcast is for informational purposes only. The hosts are not medical professionals. You should always consult with your doctor, nurse, or other certified health professional before beginning any diet or fitness program. <laughs>